Hi everyone, it is me, Plantain Charlene, and today I'm making a video about mealy bugs. So before I go any further, if this is your first time to my channel, I am a proud plant parent and I make videos mainly regarding new plant purchases that have arrived and of course my lovely plants that I have home. Though right now they are all not so lovely thanks to mealybugs. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel I hope that you do today and I hope you like, comment and click that bell to know when I'm putting out a new video. If this is not your first time coming to my channel, I am always thankful for those that return. So I appreciate you too. Thank you. So one of the plants that I am going to be discussing in this video is my Diphenbeckia that's sitting right here next to me or behind me. Um, it was one of the first plants that I noticed that had mealybugs on it. And I thought I was doing a good job I failed epically and now about 15 or more of my plants are infected with mealybugs. I'm like semi distraught over it but I understand what I need to do. Um, when I started making this video originally I had just used my um, homemade, um, oh god I can't remember but it consists of neem oil, um, peppermint soap from Dr. Bonner's, warm water, and a little bit of alcohol, which was fine. Um, I also make, I also made one that was just the insecticidal soap, Dr. Bonner's, um, the cast Castile, Castile soap, and uh, warm water with some alcohol. And, um, uh, okay guys, so basically what you're going to see next in this video are some of, if not all, of the plants that are infected, um, that I had to spray down, wash down, rinse up, whatever you want to call it, as much as I could, so that I can try and get rid of them, because this is disturbing to see how many of my plants are infected and trying to get rid of them is not an easy task so I am hoping for the best and not <laughs> trying to prepare for the worst okay so up next you guys will see those ooky little bugs and what they are doing to my plants Okay guys, so here's my pothos, my marble, one of many that is infected by these mealybugs. Um, you will see that there's areas on this plant and the other pothos, mealybugs like that are there, but there's also areas like you see in the back where that is more diatomaceous earth. But it's hard to tell the difference between a mealybug and diatomaceous earth at times. This is a bad infected leaf. Um, this is my marble pothos that I have staked. Oh no, this one isn't staked. But there is another pothos that is staked. Here it is. To a moss pole. This plant had the least amount of mealybugs when I originally saw them. But because I was, I'm guilty. I was not consistent to spraying these plants down on a weekly basis and they came back with a vengeance so possibly the eggs hatched that I didn't get and now it's a bunch of small ones some mature ones I just didn't do a good job um, of making sure I was spraying the plant down consistently so they're back and I have to go through this process again but this time I will do it properly 
another pothos. These are quarantined together. All the pothos are quarantined together because I thought it would just be easier to do it that way. There's really no, <laughs> it really is no um, uh, magic to that. If they're infected, they're infected. So here is my Diefenbeckia, the one that I showed you guys earlier that I cut back. This is what it was looking like prior. This is one of the bigger stems. This was that really bad looking looking stem that I really saw uh, was worse than it was from this video. These were done on different days of the re um, that I recorded. Here's one of my ferns. Mostly of what you see here is actually diatomaceous earth. This, um, I think I saw one or two mealybugs on this and I just went to town with diatomaceous earth. The thing about the diatomaceous earth, once you put it on your plant, to get it off is not so easy. Because I really soaked this plant with the um, solution that I made. And when it dried, you still saw the diatomaceous earth. Here's my Dracenia kiwi. This one is one of them that they keep coming back. But again, I wasn't consistent. It's kind of hard because when the liquid gets in between these leaves, it rots it and I lose the leaves. So I'm in like a, uh, in a corner trying to figure out how to get out of the situation of killing the millibugs on this plant and then still not killing the plant with the solution, um, rotting out the leaves. Here is my uh, le uh, neon pothos. You'll see here, this one was on um, my hanging planter, my wooden hanging planter. And you'll see there's mealy bugs, uh, little baby ones that are in the crevices of this plant. I believe I caught it early with this plant, but I'm going to really stay on it this time. This is before I treated it, so you're going to see at different points that I find mealybugs on the stems. So here's my Cebu Blue. I found the mealybugs really marinating on a specific leaf that I will show you later as I take video of this plant. It was very disturbing to see them all on that one leaf and you will be able to see the damage. You can see the difference in the color. Uh, there's a brown spot on that leaf and there it is. This, plant, this specific leaf right here had mealybugs just resting on it there is one right there that I will get rid of but I don't know maybe this leaf is extra juicy or something but they really like that leaf here is my aglaonema before I treated it, I only found, and when I say only, not that I'm happy to find any, but two uh, mealybugs on the leaves of this plant. This is before I treated it, so you will see when I do um, some video here, you'll see one of the mealybugs that I did find on the plant. The Chinese evergreen seems to be popular with mealybugs, and 
um, that's very annoying. I really appreciate Chinese evergreens because they are one of the plants that I do very well with, just like my Hoyas. And that is also a plant that the mealybugs seem to really like. I believe it's the leaf right here where you're going to see the mealybug. And there it is. So I really had to pay attention to the ones that I know had mealybugs on them. Here is my Janet Craig. That one had them in the crevices. There are times in this recording that you're going to see the light looks like a mealybug, but it's actually only light. But they were in the crevices, deep in the crevices of this plant. So I had to be very careful about how I sprayed. I'm feeling real brave, guys, because I was really digging deep in this plant to find them. So that shows me how much they were getting on my nerves. Here are my crotons. My crotons were sitting in my son's bedroom. I only found it on one of the plants out of the two and on a leaf, just one leaf of the plants. And I will show you that little stinky mealy bug um, that's on here. And there it is. There it is just marinating like it's nothing. Well, it's dead now. Here is my Chinese evergreen after I did a soaking of the leaves for uh, six to eight hours and then I rinsed it off. The leaves are much shinier. Uh, they don't have any dust on them. There's no mealybugs in sight. I'm very happy about that, but I know that that, that that doesn't mean that the plant is happy and good to go. I have it in this normal spot, but like I said, um, or at least I wanna say, the plants that are next to them didn't have any mealybugs and it's been weeks and I still don't see any mealybugs on it. Here is my uh, Hoya Kentiana. This plant is new as in I've recently received it less than a month ago, maybe at max a month. I was very upset to find the mealybugs on this plant, but this is after I treated it and sprayed it and rinsed all of that off. The leaves look good. They look nice and happy. I want to make sure that this plant is good. That's just a little spot that's normal, a beauty mark, I guess, of the plant leaf. But it's looking good. It's doing good. I'm very happy about that. I just want to make sure that when I do any treatments that after I rinse all of that off, I don't want to see any mealybugs. And that was the result after I really took it super serious. Here is my Neon Pothos after it was treated. The leaves look really good, nice and shiny. And I didn't find any mealybugs in the crevices. I checked this plant so consistently. This is one of the plants that I check very often, more than any others. Well, I check them all very consistently but this one in particular because of where it was but I'm not finding anything on here I'm going to stay on a consistent weekly basis of treating these plants for the next three to four weeks Here is what I call my propagation station. It consists of a Chinese evergreen, um, a cutting from the neon pothos, and a cutting from my syndapsis. I'm also going to show you my root system from these guys, which looks really good, and I'm happy about that. Um, I think I noted this already, but I didn't find any mealybugs on the syndapsis. Here's my jade. <sighs> I've cleaned this so many times, but that just doesn't go away. So I'm not sure if that's really mealybugs or if that's just the jade itself. This plant has been pretty much mealybug free. My heart shaped fern has had some mealybug uh, like effects. I had to cut a lot of the leaves from this plant. And actually, even after I treated it, I saw one on here, which you guys will see. 
and it was bothersome. Now the soil from this plant had a lot of the powdery mildew on the top, which made me believe that they really, really settled in on this plant in particular. And as I was doing this video, I noticed something right there. It looked like a mealy bug to me, so I treated it. And I could be wrong, but I'd rather play safe than sorry. And I made sure that I really, really wiped this leaf down with with the bugs with the uh, solution that I made so here are my pothos that I was showing at the beginning I am going to treat these with the alcohol um, on the q-tip and rub it ac across there to really kill them first and then I will do the solution after. I don't show the solution spray, but I do show where I get the alcohol and put it on the Q-tip so that I can treat these direct because I felt like these had the worst infection or infestation of all the plants, excluding the Dracenia. And I wanted to just make sure that I really, really got them well. So here is the alcohol, 70%, as you see. And I'm going to put on the Q-tip and let's get to killing these mealybugs directly. So there you go. Slide into the left. Yes, get them by. And let's get them over on this leaf too. The one thing about the alcohol, it kills them immediately. Immediately. The soap can kill them with time. I don't know how much time, but... You'll notice that with the alcohol, whether you spray it on there or you use the alcohol on a Q-tip or on a soft paper towel and wipe them, they turn like a brownish color, which is a dead, <laughs> no pun intended, dead giveaway that they are faded to black. And I just wanted to make sure that I killed those uh, mealybugs immediately and then I can go on to the spray and feel more be feel more comfortable about the spray. Here I'm just, uh, again, taking the Q-tip, rubbing it on the leaves where I see white. Uh, and again, there you see the syndapsis, and they didn't touch those. They didn't touch not one of those leaves, though it is mixed in with my pothos, uh, my uh, regular pothos and my marble and my uh, um, can't remember the name right now golden pothos they didn't do anything to them and I'm not complaining I'm just you know pointing out the facts here I am treating the other plant and just kind of getting those mealybugs because Boy, when I say they were enjoying these pothos, they really were enjoying these pothos plants. Okay guys, so after I do a sweep of the alcohol on the Q-tips, I'm going to talk more about the bonide insecticidal soap that I purchased. Um, I treated the, the plants that I didn't see mealybugs on, but they were near plants that had the mealybugs. I wanted to make sure that they were good, and these were mainly my Hoyas, um, my Hoya rope, my Hoya... Queen, I think it is, Crimson Queen, and the Hoya um, Sherpertii, I believe is how you pronounce it. These plants were all next to each other, and I wanted to make sure they were good. Okay, so after I finish cleaning up these leaves, I'm going to talk about the insecticidal soap that I purchased online. And I want to just 
to I wanted to have something else versus the solution that I made to see if it made a difference to see if it was more powerful than what I made and a better option I had ordered some insecticidal soap that's pre-made that's meant for more than just mealybugs. It's meant for aphids, spider, spider mites. I'll show it in this video what I purchased. Um, it's bon Bonide, I believe is the brand. Uh, that arrived today. So uh, I decided to spray up some more of the plants that I had um taken down from the area because they're mainly infecting plants in my living room where I have most of my plants and then there are some being infected in the kitchen the plants that are in the kitchen but I noticed none of my plants in my bedroom are infected and that's the coolest place in the apartment so um, I'm going to turn this around so you guys can see what I did with the um, Siphon Beckia that's here. So as you guys can see, this plant looks ragged. I mean, really, really ragged. And you can still see what I believe is mealybug on here. But um, it, it could also... Oh, look at that. Look at all this clear stems. I don't know if it's mealybugs or um, diatomaceous earth. But anyway, I cut this stem because this one was one of the worst infections but I do see oh wow as I'm doing this video now mind you I videoed this days ago so I'm going to be cutting all of these stems off and treating them and uh, hoping that I can still save it but I don't know only time will tell so yeah we'll see so, here is the Bonide brand insecticidal soap. Um, it notes on the back here all of the things that it controls. And you see there it says mealybugs. Powdery mildew is something I'm also noticing on the top layer of the soil. So I figured I would get something that controlled two and one. But no, it controlled more than that. Um, or if there are any other bugs that I'm not seeing or I haven't noticed. And it's on this list this will control it.
said that I can back here another one right next to it and these are very similar in um, the types of Dyfenbeckia but not one merely bug is on here and I really need to move it because they're kind of close they're not kind of close they are close so um, I'm going to move this one since this is the infected one and like I said you guys can see what they've done to this plant and being that I've read up that mealybugs the damage that they do take time that just tells me how long they must have been marinating on this plant and when I took a good look before I could tell that they were in um, like in between right here Ugh. where the stem the new stem comes out but there's like a split on the other stem they were marinating in there and probably making all kind of babies, but I'm happy that I'm doing what I need to do to make sure they are gone. And I'm going to clean the pot that this is into. That you see here is diatomaceous earth. I know that. But you see that there. And... I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but those white spots there, I can't confirm nor deny if that's diatomaceous earth or mealybug. So thank you everyone for watching this video. If you have any suggestions um, for treated mealybugs that I have not done already, please tell me. Um, even if you can let me know what plants are more susceptible to mealybugs than others, I noticed that my Hoyas and new to me my Pothos are very susceptible to them. They really seem to like the way the leaves taste. Ernest came home and it threw me off. So like I said, if there's any things that you anything that you can help me um, understand about the type of plants that these mealybugs really are attracted to, I'd appreciate it. Um, any help is welcomed. I'm really trying my best to spread out these plants to be in quarantine. I don't have that much space in my apartment, so it's a little bit difficult with quarantining plants when you don't have like a backyard or a terrace or a specified space that you can, um, or dedicated space that you can put them all in since they've infected so many of them it's been harder and harder for me to quarantine these plants plus let them get light and so on and so forth but okay that's it guys thank you for watching i appreciate every last one of you please stay safe out there please 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 stay safe out there everyone thank you and god bless